And the question is, what are your biggest priorities for innovation in 2021? So I have four priorities uh, for 2021 with regard to innovation. First and foremost is to see more small and mid-sized companies better situate themselves to adapt to innovation. Um, I think there's a real struggle for any small or mid-sized firm in any industry, um, but uh, they really need to dedicate staff to finding new uh, and better ways to do business, which we call innovation, um, a process to engage vendors um, resources to manage things like data privacy and security, especially if they're doing any online activities. Um, and they need also better be able to better access ways to vet technology that they're not familiar with. So that's the, the big bucket there is like smaller and mid-sized firms adapting to innovation and, and a lot of the prop tech and construction tech solutions that are out there. Um, the second is that I think governments need to be much more aggressive um, in adopting a prop tech uh, mindset and innovation mindset. Uh, and create better conditions to enable um, the, the entire industry to just transform itself. Um, too many constraints and uh, it's too hard and no seems to be the default uh, at all levels of government. The things that we're really focused on are financial instruments addressing access to housing and inclusion. Um, just like, just generally, you know, things that are like equity you know, focused. Um, we've looked a lot at that, like racial equity and everything else. And I think that uh, financial instruments are a big way that things can happen there. And we've seen a lot of things um, kind of coming through that, especially like in financial education, which is interesting, but also is really important um, in that space. And then I, we're also looking at a lot of different ways that COVID has affected the market. So this is like this year in particular. Um, and I would say another big focus for us is ways that governments are adapting and changing um, because of what's happened. Um, and then also ways that development has and will change as we move forward. And like the things that we've seen around that would just be like um, hotel, uh, people trying to do hotel and office conversions into housing has been a really interesting thing to get into and talk through a lot of those companies. Um, and they do face a lot of regulatory barriers. So that's why like, how do governments address this issue? And then how, do pri how does the private industry address it as well? So um, those are kind of the two areas we're focused on this year. All right. So there's two main things that I would say we are looking for for the next year. One is truly finding those innovations in construction that could be lowering cost of housing. So when we think of construction tech that's lowering cost of housing, we're looking at any kind of construction technology along the entire construction value chain. So anywhere from the very beginning of conception, when you're surveying the land, finding the land, permitting, then design, then actual building, and at the very end, monitoring, we're looking for specific innovators in those buckets that we can bring into the housing space. So a lot of times we'll find innovators that are not even thinking about the affordable housing space, but that's actually a very big market they could be tapping into. So when it's finding those innovators and engaging them in our space, and the second big one is getting true adoption. So one of the hardest things in the construction industry is that it's incredibly archaic. There's this kind of culture and mindset that we've already done it this way for so long. Why would we change it? There's so much liability and safety issues. Why would we bring in a new innovation and change the way we've been doing it if it's already working? Well, the issue is that those things that are working are working in terms of maybe safety and liability, but they're incredibly expensive and causing the housing crisis. And so we wanna get massive adoption by engaging developers, governments, NGOs, nonprofits to do proof of concepts with innovations and actually be tracking the metrics of cost, speed, and quality. We think if enough people are you know, measuring the impact of using technologies by reducing the cost and increasing the speed at which they're building, we're gonna get more and more adoption and trust by the sector. And so the, the two biggest things are that it's finding the innovators and then two getting more adoption in our sector. The way I look at things, I do look at things through the lens of the adoption bell curve. And I don't think enough of the industry really understands how uh, technology is adopted, like Julieta said. Um, and so we're, well, my job, part of my job, um, self proclaimed job is to develop connection and content around disintermediating the building products space from the raw materials down to the real estate agent. And, um, and there, there, there's an average of about just under $30,000 per median home, which is 10% over 10% um, or just under, that is just compound margin in the channel. Just so-and-so marks it up and then someone else marks it up and then someone else marks it up. And then eventually the agent adds 6%. So, um, and, and part of that is that the vertical integration um, 
the United States, the, where it's actually working in the world is are the places no one's looking. So how can we replicate that here? And so the content and connection around the right people to make that happen and taking my experience in going, turning um, B2B into B2C at my last two roles um, uh, is a lot of what I'll be advising people and helping them do uh, going from going through the channel direct to the end user um, in the next year or so. So okay. that if I was to boil it down to one word, it would be disintermediation.